Welcome to Time News. Today we will be discussing the latest developments in the longevity industry over the past week. In this episode, we will have a total of 11 new species to share with you. First, let's get started with longevity protein. A study from UNSW Sydney involving David Sinclair showed that overexpressing sirtuin 2 in mice doesn't affect their lifespan or overall health, despite previous findings in fertility. Even with changes in brain metabolites, there is no functional impact, suggesting sirtuin 2 overexpression may not increase longevity. The study is in aging cell. A study on healthy adults found out that the longevity protein clotho decreases notably after the age of 50, compared to those aged 20 to 34, while no significant differences were observed between low and high performers. The group aged over 65 showed poorer performance in the 6-minute walk test. The decline in clotho was associated with age, body fat, and reduced exercise capacity, suggesting a connection between clotho levels and age-related changes, and the study is in scientific reports. On dietary restriction, a study on 960 mice found that both calorie restriction and intermittent fasting extended lifespan, stress resilience rather than metabolic changes, emerge as a key predictor for longevity. Genetic factors had a significant impact on lifespan compared to dietary interventions, and this is done by U.S. scientists. And here comes a new anti-aging target. Targeting COP1 vesicle formation and end marrow stimulation emerges as a promising strategy to eliminate senescent cells, offering potential therapeutic benefits in cancer and diseases associated with cellular senescence, and this is in Nature Cell Biology from Imperial College London. When it comes to lifespan, deleting the cis2 gene in yeast led to the largest replicative lifespan increase observed. Introducing a human gene, PPCDC, counteracts this effect. This shed light on how gene influences lifespan, highlighting the need for accurate measurements, which is done by the Yale University and published in Nature Communications. Another study in Nature Communications is from the researchers of University of Georgia. They found that epigenetic disorder increases with age in mammals, faster in shorter-lived species. The rate of epigenetic drift scales with maximum lifespan across mammals and connects to the species' maximum lifespan, with CPG density partially influencing this process. How about reprogramming? Partially reprogrammed aged human dermal fibroblast implanted into a vitro aged skin models demonstrate enhanced expression of extracellular matrix proteins and improved tissue regeneration and wound healing. This non-genetic partial reprogramming approach offers a novel avenue for cell-based therapies in regenerative medicine, and it is in aging cell. A mice study from the University of Lausanne shows that for in vivo reprogramming, when genes are continuously activated to rejuvenate tissues, elastic liver and intestinal problems, causing weight loss and early death, providing insight into the dynamics of in vivo reprogramming, and it is in nature aging. On bone aging, researchers from Chinese Academy of Sciences found that a scaffold releasing hydrogen gas locally improves bone repair in aged mice by transforming the senescent microenvironment through anti-inflammation and anti-senescent effects, showcasing potential for enhanced rejuvenation in critical size bone defects, which is in nature communications. In aging cell, a research from the University of Utah showed that Reducing mTOR specifically in endothelial cells mitigates age-related arterial stiffness, improves endothelial function, and ameliorates metabolic dysfunction in old mice, suggesting potential therapeutic strategies for age-related vascular and metabolic issues. The last piece is about skin aging, NA Aging US. A study shows that as skin cells age, their communication vehicle called extracellular vesicle change. These aged EVs carry specific molecule links to skin barrier function. When transferred to younger cells, these EVs affect their growth and tissue building ability, resembling characteristics of aged cells. This study suggests that this altered communication may contribute to age-related changes observed in the skin. Thank you for joining us on this week's Time News. We hope you find these updates informative and inspiring, and don't forget to subscribe our channel. We'll see you in next week's broadcast. Wishing you a happy and long life.